Hey, what's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an upcoming mini PC known as the Pantera Pico PC. Now we've seen similar units like this in the past, like the Nook Box, the Lark Box, and the Lark Box Probe, but this does offer a little more RAM and I.O. So this is going to be launching on Indiegogo soon, but they were kind enough to send over a pre-production unit for testing. I'm not being paid to make this video. Nobody is going to view this content before it goes live. Let's go ahead and get this out of the box and take a look at it. Now this does come in a bit bigger than the Lark Box or the Nook Box, but the main reason they wanted to up the form factor on it was the cooling system. They've added a beefier cooling system to this unit, so that CPU should be able to boost a lot longer and this thing is just going to stay a lot cooler. Not to mention the extra I.O. they needed the room in here. But really, when it comes down to it, this is still a super tiny Windows PC. Along with the Pico PC, it also comes with this 12 volt, 2 amp power supply. So it's a 24 watt power supply. And I don't think we're going to be pulling 24 watts out of this unit, but I will do some testing by the end. So on the front here, as you can see, we have our power button, micro SD card slot, and two USB 3.0 ports. Moving around to each side, there's not much going on. But when we take a look at the back, we have our power in, which is USB type C, HDMI 2.0, another USB 3.0 port, and a USB 2.0 port. Another cool thing that they've added to this unit is some LED accent lighting around the top. It's only blue. I was kind of hoping that this was RGB, but unfortunately it's just set to blue. Still looks pretty good wrapping around here. As for the specs of this mini PC, for the CPU, we have the Intel J4125. It's a quad-core x86 CPU, base clock of 2 GHz, with a burst up to 2.7. The GPU is the Intel UHD 600 up to 750 MHz. We have 8 GB of LPDDR4. They will offer this in a few different storage variants from 128 up to 512. 802.11ac Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, and this runs Windows or Linux. It does come pre-installed with Windows 10 Home 64-bit. So now what I want to do is move right into some testing. We're going to test this out as a regular old desktop PC. Web browsing, 4K video playback. I'm going to run some benchmarks. We're going to test out some games and some emulation. All right, so here we are. I've had this up and running for a little while. I've installed a bunch of applications that I want to test out here. One thing that I've noticed is the CPU temperature is definitely staying a lot cooler than the other mini PCs that have tested with this same chip here, like the Larkbox and the Larkbox Pro. As you can see, we have that Celeron J4125, 8 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM. Unfortunately, it's only running at 2133 megahertz, and we have the built-in UHD 600 graphics. All right, so before we move on to some heavy duty stuff, I just want to test out the basics here, like web browsing. So we'll go ahead and open up the Edge browser. Overall, with these J4125s, I've had really good luck with web browsing. I mean, it hasn't really presented an issue for these little chips here. This does have AC Wi-Fi built in, and I am connected to my five gigahertz network. So as long as you have a good connection, you really shouldn't have an issue here. Everything loads up quickly. It's really smooth. Let's head over to the Raspberry Pi website. Lots of images there to populate. And it should load right up. Yeah, there we go. Next thing I wanted to test was some 4K video playback. So we'll go over here to YouTube. We'll go ahead and get this set up real quick. We'll just go with this 4K 60. Go full screen with it. Make sure we are at 4K. Turn Stats for Nerds on. And start it up. So it does look like we get a few drop frames on that initial load in. And that's pretty normal for these low end chips. Let's let it play out just a little bit more. And if you take a look up here, you can see that it's still dropping a few frames, but it's really not that bad. If I didn't have this on, I'd never notice it. But again, this isn't the best performance that I've seen with 4K video playback on this same chipset. I also wanted to run a quick Geekbench 5 and just check out this score. Single, 434. Multi, 1531. Keep in mind, this is a low-end Intel chip, so these scores aren't phenomenal. Now this is not a gaming PC by any means, but we should be able to play some light stuff like Minecraft here. I'm at 14 chunks, I do have fancy graphics on, and it's running great. I saw it drop a little bit when I was doing some digging there, but Minecraft is fully playable on this mini PC. Next up, Half-Life 2, medium settings, running great here. These older Source games should run pretty decently. You go for Left 4 Dead, Half-Life, Half-Life 2, things like that. You should have pretty good luck on the J4125. So 
So now it's time to take it up notch. Here we have Skyrim. This is the original version of Skyrim, 720p low, and this is not gonna hit 60. So we're over 30, but I was really hoping that it was gonna do better. And unfortunately, when this was connected to my game capture card, I lost sound with Skyrim and the next game you're gonna see, but sound is working on the monitor that I'm using this with. I'm not sure what it is, but sometimes this happens with these low-end Intel chips. And the final game I wanted to test here was CSGO 720p low settings. Again, was really hoping we could get a little better out of it, but this averaged 25 FPS. So obviously we're working with a low powered PC here. Native gaming on this isn't going to be great, but when it comes to streaming, I think it can definitely handle it with apps like GeForce Now and Stadia. So with that AC Wi-Fi built into the Pantera, it's actually handling GeForce Now quite well. Here we have Cyberpunk 2077 and it's working great. I haven't had any connection issues, but keep in mind, this is really going to depend on your internet connection. And where I am right now has a pretty decent connection. So as long as you have that, GeForce Now isn't going to be an issue on this mini PC. Next up, I wanted to test out Stadia. I'm actually using the Edge browser here. I could have downloaded Chrome, but we'll just go with Grid real quick and see how it performs. Seeing how well GeForce Now ran, I'm pretty sure we're going to have good luck with this one also. The final thing I wanted to test here was a little bit of emulation. First up we have Dreamcast with ReDream at 1280x960. Here's Dead or Alive 2, one of the harder ones to emulate with the ReDream emulator, and it's running perfectly fine. Next up, we have PSP using PPSSPP, Chains of Olympus, 2X, Vulcan back in, running great. With the easier to run games, you can even take some of them up to 4x, but with a harder to run game like this, you'll have to keep it on down there around too. Next on the list, GameCube using Dolphin with the DirectX 11 back in. Soul Calibur 2 runs great, but this will not handle the harder to run games like Automotalista or F-Zero. For the lower end stuff, Mario, Wind Waker, as you can see, Soul Calibur 2, it runs it pretty good. Now whenever I test out these mini PCs, I always have it plugged into a kilowatt meter so I could check out the power draw from the wall. This is total system power draw at idle, 5.7 watts, 4K video playback, 9.3, and gaming, 19.4. And I did stress test it, and the highest I could get was 19.4 out of it. So in the end, given the CPU that we're using here in the Pantera Pico, I think it's a solid little performer. I mean, it's definitely on par with the Lark Box and the GMK Nook Box. CPU temps with this one here definitely stayed a lot lower than those other boxes, but if you already own one of those, there's really no reason to upgrade to this. Personally, I'm waiting for the newer Celeron chips to come out in these mini PCs. We should get a significant little boost in GPU performance on those and CPU performance because most of them are clocked a little higher. But as of making this video, I mean, basically, this is what we have with these super tiny 4K mini PCs. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the Pantera Pico or maybe even backing the Indiegogo, I will leave a few links in the description. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this box, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.